yeah, so let's move on to track four. That was dyslexia. Now we're going to hear empty vessels make the loudest sound.
this stuff. Uh, I'm just going to read you a couple of my notes, what I was thinking during this song. Like, um, like I rate that song like eight, half, nine, because it's a slower song, which is more challenging, I think, uh, as a as a record producer, uh, or if you're doing a, producing a lot of tracks, you'll know that when you do slower tracks, I find it more difficult to to approach. I mean, it's sort of, in other words, it's sort of easier when it's a fast track to just do kinds of fun stuff with production. But when it's slower, um, it's it's harder. It's it's the same way they say comedy is is probably one of the hardest kind of films to make. You think it'd be easy, but it's not. The words I was thinking, unbridled creativity. That's just the way of the Mars Volta. Unbridled creativity. And I can learn so much from this. I mean, this track alone, I could come back and just study this and just listen to it, what they did. The sort of elements of shoegaze being, you know, sort of noise rock in a way, which is sort of what shoegaze is sort of related to, I would say, sometimes. But it's just, in general, it's just to, to make a slower song and to just pull it off so well. I mean, that was amazing. That was a slower song, and yet it was so vibrant and it didn't feel it didn't drag you down at all it didn't um mind you i suppose slower songs are supposed to calm you down right sometimes but i just i don't know it's just super unique i'd say like nine nine five actually even maybe for this track that was f fascinating track so let's move on to uh track number five which is the macon jewel or no the malkin jewel sorry It's just massive the the bass going on there that song was amazing again eight nine nine five i don't know this song was just fascinating every song so far is just totally tickling my fancy i'm totally loving it again these guys are just so dang creative and um i mean if you want an example of creativity unbridled creativity just listen to the mars volta they just they just sort of be damned what anyone thinks do what you're soul is saying because it's some sometimes it's kind of demented sometimes it's very jarring you know these are not qualities that you would typically associate with uh, uh creativity and expression but uh it works that's the that's the bottom line it works as a song a song's supposed to move you it's supposed to get you thinking or or feeling something and uh mars volta are just masters masters man yeah like what i'm thinking like i know they they released all the albums um as a set I would love to have had one of them, but they're very expensive. I unfortunately have to be very frugal nowadays with my family and everything and our finances. And uh, I've been really um, extremely on the frugal side as far as purchasing albums. I mean, if, if things are, if I had more cash, I would definitely go for that Mars Volta album set. And if not that, at least a CD set of the equivalent. I'd love to have a box set of everything they've done because it's just an example of fine art, <laughs> you know. So that was the Malk and Jewel, track five. Now we're on track six. Lapachka or Lapaka.
synthesizer work in this song. The octave bass. And plus this button here. Oh, wow, that was a great ending. I just love the, the way it transported me. I just got sucked in there. I loved it. And that whole track, again, really enjoyable as far as uh, scoring it on my first reaction. Listen to it. I would say it's a nine, man. It's, it's great. This is, album is so good. I, I'm loving everything on this album. So that was Lepachka. And um, I was just remembering, uh, just before I looked this up, uh, on Wikipedia, just a, a quick glance at what they had to say about the album, and, and, and apparently um, Omar was saying uh, that it was like new, new punk or no future punk. I think he was saying it was future punk, and that song especially made me think of future punk um, in general uh, as the tendency in this album. There's a certain punkness for sure, but often you don't always associate punk with prog because um they seem to be kind of contrary in a way but not really i think i think prog in the end can, can like like dmv are doing is they actually uh maybe they're coming from a, a punk place and they're embracing prog into punk and uh and that's just wonderful i think it's great it's it's just the same way that prog got embraced into metal you know because prog didn't start start off metal although that's debatable because king crimson is such a prototype uh, metal band and um, even though they're prog you know and before pro before metal was metal you know I mean they say Black Sabbath maybe was the first kind of heavy metal album or whatever but um, you could argue too that um, King Crimson may have been uh, early early progenitors of if that's, is that the right word progenitors of, of metal and I love the punk aspect which is really of course very intrinsic to the the entire TMV thing, and that's why I think that some prog people don't, you know, some traditional proggers don't embrace the Mars Volta, uh, at least right away. Maybe maybe it's a bit jolting and jarring, but that's what they do, and that's what punk is supposed to do. It's supposed to jar and jolt, and um, and that's an important quality uh, when you're talking about getting too comfortable and sitting on your laurels. You know, um, as far as uh, music. Um, as far as music and prog the progressive music, the progress of music in general, you got to keep shaking things up. This is a great band that they do that so well. Click the link at the top left of the screen for part three of this react. It's also uh, linked in the description box below.